Welcome back to Factorio, everyone. On tap for this session, we're looking at late game modules and beacons. Then there are only two episodes left in the series before we achieve victory, so getting close to the end. Here we're focusing in on the processing units production line again and showing what I think is the most common combination of late game modules to use. We have three productivity and one speed in each of these. Of course, they're all tier three. Now, why not all four productivity? Well, that's an option but it's not nearly as commonly used, I don't think, and I don't think it's as good, frankly. You have plus 30% productivity here with the three productivity, and then the speed basically synergizes very well with those. So it takes that speed that you're gonna be losing, 15% per productivity module, makes up for all of it, so we're actually plus 5% there if you look on the right. So plus 5% speed and plus 30% productivity. If you go with all four productivity, then you're getting 40% extra, but then you're only gonna be running at 40%. You get a much longer production line. Now that still would be the best in terms of absolutely minimizing the incoming resources. But in terms of free product over time, which is generally what you're mostly gonna care about the most if you're going the productivity route, having that one speed module in there to basically make up for the weakness of the productivity, really beneficial. There's some other combinations you can use, but I think the only one really worth considering is just to stick with the three efficiency module tier ones. Keep yourself with that minimum amount of energy use and pollution. You could do something like, well, I'm gonna have one productivity module and then three of the tier three efficiency modules, which I'm not even building. And that would keep you at the minimum energy and it would be close to the minimum for pollution. But you're only getting that one productivity module for 10% and you're buying four of the tier three efficiency modules to get it. If you're gonna go that route, I would just say, don't put any modules in at all. And then at that point, well, why not put in the three efficiency tier ones because they're cheap. So really, you're going productivity or you're going lean. I don't see a really great option other than those to use. So let's see how beacons might be able to help us. And this is a beacon, which has that yellow square around it. That's how far it can transmit. It can hold two modules and it can transmit half of their effect to anywhere in that yellow square. Pretty pricey at 480 kilowatts of power. You have to not care about power to get to this point. Generally speaking, it's a good thing to start working on after you get your nuclear up. These also cannot use, you can see the listed there, cannot use productivity modules. So because of that, what's generally done is we'll put down, for example, a assembly machine there, and we'll bring in some power to it. and you'll put productivity modules in the assembling machine itself to get as much productivity as you can. Say we use advanced circuits, and then we just plop some of these down in there. As we've noted, this is slow right now, minus 60% speed, but it's got the 40% productivity. Then you ramp up the speed using the beacons. Now you can use efficiency modules in these as well, but why? The whole point of them is you don't care about power, you just want to crank out more and more items. So using efficiency modules in the beacons is I would say unless you, in some very marginal edge case scenario, rather pointless. Now you don't really want to crowd these around, which is a natural first tendency. I want to maximize the range of these, get as many affecting it as I can. If we look at this here though, from here, if we built a second row around, they can't reach the machine. And if we build them in close enough, then you can't fit this inside row in. So generally what is done is one of two ways, either an eight beacon build or a 12 beacon build. That's if you're using a standard assembly machine or an electric furnish, going for bigger machines like a refinery or doing different sort of exotic setups, you might wanna change that. But eight and 12 are the most commonly used. So we want this to be out far enough that it barely touches. And see that corner is barely touching there. And we're gonna move this along. And now we're over to this side. And if we try to put another one here, that's not going to reach. So four on this side. And we're going to put four on this side as well. Hence the term of the eight beacon build. And then we plop in our speed modules. And now look what we have. Same productivity. Obviously pollution is high. We're taking over three and a half megawatts just to run this one machine. Not counting the additional almost four megawatts we're gonna take for the beacons themselves, but we've got almost three and a half times the normal crafting speed. 
That's a lot of free product we're going to get. And of course, we'd extend this out, and some of these beacons would be doing double duty because you'd extend that row out, extend this out as far as you needed to. But then in between here, you've created the maximum room for belts to come in or electric poles or bots delivering things to chests or however you want to arrange your setup. Then, for the 12 beacon build, we're simply taking this sort of to the next level, if you will. So if we knock these out, and you're going to be a little bit closer on one side. Otherwise, what you'd end up with is these jutting out a little bit from your square, and it wouldn't fit very well with the next area that you might want to run. But if we drop in the rest of our modules, so now we have 12 beacons plus this. Okay, we're up to almost 5 megawatts for just the machine itself. Almost 6 for the beacons. And we've got massive pollution and everything else, but we also have almost 5.5 times crafting speed plus that 40% productivity. Even more free product. To make this work, you'd either want to have bot delivery in and out or use undergrounds and some pretty specific engineering, but it very much is something that you can make work. Now on the research side, we are most of the way through our upgrade. So going forward, we'll be looking at the military options in the late game, get the rest of them researched. That'll be in our next session. And then the final one will simply be winning, going through the process of building the rocket. And we could have done that already, but it would be a little anticlimactic to not make that be the end. So I'm going through the other researches first, but as you can see, we are really narrowing down what those are. Hope you'll stick around for that. Be back with more Factorio soon. Thanks for watching.